what do you think about IPOP, their leader, and their agitation to come out from Nigeria? They are very unrealistic boys. They are not, IPOP to me is not pursuing the right thing. When this war was fought, I told the IPOC leader, he was not born at the time. You don't meet in before, Chief? I've never met him, but uh, yeah, I have challenged him, and he has also challenged me that I was, I was a slave of the nuns. That's why he branded me. I told him, he has a good fight that we are being neglected. The youth of the East have been neglected. The people of the East have been neglected. They have only five seats, whereas others have, other regions have six. One, in fact, had seven. Based on what? Nobody knows. So for every appointment that has been made in this country, the Igbos are to change. If you have... If you are distributing universities at per seat, they will have five seats, five universities. South South will have six. Southwest will have six. Northwest will have seven. But the Igbos form the third leg of this country when this country was created. So they had a good fight, a good they have a good problem. Uh, they complain, but not the way they were. They are going about it. So you know, things say the South South they part of that map because well, this is something they talk that, over and over and over. Say the, if they come out, that, what is Delta, it? Delta they part of Biafra. How can Delta be part, be part of Biafra? Biafra? In what way? Is Biafra older than Delta? Are they bigger than Delta? How can River State become part of uh, uh, Biafra? No, 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 no. Or oh, oh, Akwai Bom. They are dreaming, thinking about the eastern region of those days, of pre independent, pre the time states were created. Hmm? So, he's a young man. But let me say this before I finish about IPOC. I hope the federal government will give him a fair and, and decent trial, open trial. Because I do not understand up to today how the federal government got him into, back into Nigeria. We remember the days of Omar Udiko. When it was being created, created in the in the in the big box to be brought to be kidnapped to Nigeria. I don't know how this young man was was brought to back to Nigeria. There are legitimate ways of doing it, legal ways of doing it, by extradition. Where he is, the court there will be there will be court session. To determine whether he committed a political offense or uh, a criminal offense. That will determine whether it will be brought back or not. I do not think these were followed. And I think that the, the Kenyan government has a duty to tell us was it, is this boy lying? Was he it, was it in Kenya for eight days? With the British passport? But the Kenyan government don't deny, say, they know... No, 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 no. The man said, I was abducted from Kenya. The man who was saying they were playing politics. They would want to During the trial, we will now hear this. Can you be made to make a statement to the public? But I do not agree with him, the way he's fighting the fight. You're just killing your people. 
must listen to people. Must de belong to a different society. That's where I disagree with you. Yeah, President Muhammad Dubari talked for one recent interview. Say he get assurance from the elders from the South South and also the youth. Say South South don't get any intention to talk about separation from Nigeria. You be one of those elders. We believe in no separation. From I'm not because I'm being an elder. I'm the leader of the Jaws. The INC was referring to the Jaws National Congress where the president led his, uh, his executive, newly elected executive to. I am the chairman of the board of trustees of that organization. The judge did not give uh, Buhari any assurance. All they, are, they were saying is that we are part of this country. We are not breaking away from Nigeria. We are part of this country. We have no reason to succeed, provided we would belong to a country where all of us are equal, provided our area will be developed, provided we will be allowed to participate in the oil industry in our home. This is what they said. So to quote them out of uh, context, it's unfair. And I'm patriotic. So, Chief, you the talk say make we not rule out in the nearest future South South also coming up with a position say then they marginalized and they won't come out. From we are not saying that. Who owned this country? Come out for who? Who owned this country? They like to now pack and go to where? We will fight for our right here. And we are saying that they should mind their ways of doing things. When we, got, when we got to the stage of taking our destiny into our own hands, you will know what we want, what we will do. Yeah, and, and, and Chief, recently, the, just because you mentioned uh, the fight to produce uh, a president from the South, then, and that is uh, something we, the Southern governors, don't again talk about and don't decide for recent meeting where they do, they talk about how the next president of uh, Nigeria is supposed to come from the south. You agree with that, their decision? Oh, yes. Listen, this country we are, now we all get more. Not be one person, not be one group of people. When Lugard signed an agreement, bring us together in 1914, he did not say that the north, the north should be senior partner of that amalgamation. The south should be the junior partner. Or oh, the north should be the husband. And the south should be the wife. There was nothing like that. It was an equal uh, agreement that you are all equal. Come together. That's what happened. But we knew that the British government at that time, and I'm happy that the BBC, were helping the Northerners to dominate the South. And that's where we find ourselves today. But we have been telling them, this cannot continue forever. The first Prime Minister we have in this country, equivalent to Mr. President, but uh, from Bauchi State, not East. So when the Northeast people came recently that uh, they have not produced a uh, president of this country, it's a lie. Oh, okay, okay, Chief, you've clearly stated. So that now what we are saying that it should come back. To the it should go to the South now that. Uh, Buhari has ruled for eight years. And his administration in, is 10 In 2023. Okay, Chief. So let's talk about uh, something else where the Southern governors also talk about uh, from waiting happen for the National Assembly, the Senate, and the House of Reps on the PIB bill. But the Southern governors reject the 3% uh, revenue for host uh, 
communities where they produce oil, say, no, they're enough, say, 5% they want. You support their decision? Well, 100%. I support their decision. The, even when they said they were, they were ready to accept 5%, I disagree with them. We want 10%. 10% equity of the uh, 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 of the allocation, Share, equity shares of the company. We want to be part of the oil industry. The northerners who are today having all the oil blocks, who are the owners of the oil industry, who maintain control it, they don't produce any oil. Not a pint of oil. They don't. Most of them who benefit from this oil, they don't know what uh, what crude oil looks like. For the people, it, for instance, in twenty in twenty o five, when we had the same problem at the at the political um, uh, conference, reform conference held in uh, in, in Abuja here at the International Conference Center. I was the leader of the South-South. This same issue came up. We produced a paper at that conference. And one of it was that, to show what, who, are, who are the people benefiting from the oil we have without contributing a cobble to the economy of the country by form of oil production. And we discovered that non central to get about forty eight billion naira yearly. But they don't contribute the cobble to the revenue of Nigeria for this federation account, apart from what is produced every other charges, custom and so on. We're talking about oil and gas. Northwest, they took about 49% billions. They don't contribute to Cobo. Northeast, they took about 45%. They didn't contribute anything. Southwest, they, uh, they, they took away about 49 uh, billion naira a year. They contributed less than 4%. In you Nondo, know, where the jaws and the largest are, at the water side, of Nondo. Then the southeast, between Imbo and Abia, they contributed about 2.5% at that time. And they got only 25, uh, uh, 25 billion naira. Where are the south south? Plus the thirteen percent, we got above a hundred and forty percent a billion. How much did we contribute? More than ninety one point five percent did the cover. Year today, we are the poorest. Have you ever seen where wealth is produced in your backyard and you are the poorest? You are the most neglected. Those who benefit from the oil come from other areas. Today, the oil flows through my backyard. If I want something, benefit from it. I have to travel to Darar to meet Mr. President Mohammed Buhari. Can I benefit from this oil? We say yes, provided you are APC member. Oh, okay. Uh, let's talk about some other national issues okay, now. Maybe we talk about insecurity because that's now one big issue where Nigeria debates with from the southeast where you see attacks on police formations and police officers and security uh, officers to the south-south uh, where we have um, the sea issues of kidnapping, southwest farmers, headers, uh, clashes, northwest the issues of uh, uh, banditry and kidnappings, and the southeast where Boko Haram seen a big problem. How you go assess the response of the federal and state government to tackle all these issues? Which which issues? Of insecurity. Insecurity is a national issue. 
that is uh, actually eating into the fabric of this nation. And if we do not take time, we will have, we will, we will, we will have no country to show for it. So it is not a matter for political parties, not a matter for the executive alone, not a matter for National Assembly. It's a matter for all citizens of Nigeria. But unfortunately, power is in the hand of the executive and the National Assembly. All we are saying, provide enough material but our soldiers so fight. We have fought in other countries. We have fought in the Congo. We even fought in Europe, in, in Pakistan, in, in, in Asia. We fought in Africa, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Congo. Why today the Nigerian soldiers that are held very high in other parts of the world Today, we cannot even conquer Boko Haram for 13 years, going to 20 years now. So it's a shame to all of us. It's an embarrassment to all of us. But unfortunately, the federal government is not taking this matter serious enough. Provide money. This is the time when extra budgetary should be made for the war. But unfortunately, those who are commanding those armies, uh, those forces in those times, most of them were regarded not being clean, not being transparent. So the amount voted to buy weapons and so on, in most cases, they bought expired products from Eastern uh, Europe, Ukraine, and other places. And again, the ambassadors, one, you remember the case whereby a general sent soldiers to carry 400 and something million naira in a vehicle, and they were caught. What did they do to the general? What type of punishment did they give to him? 